Jonathan Katz. I'm a consultant uh, in the data science group, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, anomaly detection, specifically using uh, a, a technique called uh, the autoencoder, uh, which is a type of um, deep learning neural network. So I'm, I'm going to start by talking about the um, one of our use cases and then uh, show you uh, uh, the template that uh, we use to uh, do this type of analysis. And then I'll also go into uh, other, um, other use cases uh, as well because uh, anomaly detection uh, is, is useful in a lot of different contexts. Uh, uh, so let's get started with this particular challenge that we had. Uh, we, we were working with uh, a, a large organization that did uh, internet providing, uh, video on demand, uh, telephony. Um, uh, they had a, a large complex um, service uh, provide, provider uh, system. Um, and Sometimes they would have problems, and, and the problem uh, was they didn't really get early. Uh, the first they know that they're having a problem is that the customers call in and, and tell, tell them that there's uh, uh, an interruption of service. Uh, so w what we were looking for was a way to detect the problem sooner. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, what you really need are uh, two things is uh, timely alerts uh, that something is wrong and then cause analysis to help them uh, help guide them in fixing what the problem is and and this has very broad apl applicability uh, in uh, internet of things uh, manufacturing pro processes and so forth uh, so um, let's uh, look at the current environment uh, that uh, we started with uh, basically, the uh, the small print over here is is a somewhat unreadable uh, log file, uh, and and these log files have a lot of information in them, uh, but they're not uh, user user friendly. They're they're uh, uh, user um, uh, hostile, uh, one would say. And and basically, what you get is a situation like this where you have a lot of information but no no understanding of what's going on. So um, the first thing we did was we uh, used a, an R script uh, uh, as a data function uh, to uh, parse this information and make it into tabular form. So there are all different uh, uh, types of messages, uh, and, uh, and, and the, the, the messages within those types uh, constituted the rows uh, of, of the um, the data that was going to go into our analysis. Uh, so here's uh, uh, one of the templates that we use for this, and, and basically uh, you can you can try and visualize some of the uh, the data. Uh, but the the point here is that you would select the variables that you you're going to use. So uh, uh, you know, in, in most cases, you would use uh, just about all all of the the data. Uh, because we're talking about a, an unsupervised learning situation. We, we don't really know. We don't have an outcome variable that we're looking for. We're looking at uh, looking for some kind of anomaly uh, that uh, is, is atypical. Um, so uh, actually, uh, the anomaly detection in deep learning is, is in a sense, an extension of principal components where, or, or clustering uh, approaches also, where you, where you can say, okay, here are some typical clusters or, or typical uh, uh, components um, that uh, uh, highlight uh, the, the data points that, are, that don't fit uh, into that. So um, uh, the autoencoder is, is uh, not a new method, but it's uh, become it's gotten a lot more. Uh, available um, and and uh, useful. Uh, the um, uh, it's used uh, in, in a lot of different ways, not only for anomaly detection but for data compression. Uh, it's used for pre-training deep uh, learning net networks where you've got the ability to pick out uh, uh, features uh, that are specific to your data set without uh, any. Um, 
pre-knowledge of what, what that's likely to be. Uh, so here are some of the uh, applications uh, um, of anomaly detection. Um, we'll talk about those, but th this is a, uh, a simple autoencoder might look, look like, and the, the, the description of it as an autoencoder means that what you're trying to do is replicate the input as closely as you can uh, as your output. Uh, but do, doing it uh, with a kind of um, uh, dimension reduction or, or uh, um, uh, you know, some, some kind of way that, that uh, reduces the degrees of freedom um, because you've got, in, in the neural network context, you've got a limited number uh, of neurons or, or nodes in your, um, in your hidden layer. And we'll see later that, that uh, it can get a, a, a little bit more um, detailed in terms of uh, the features you can extract by having multiple hidden layers. Uh, so we use uh, um, an R package provided by uh, H2O. It's an open source R package, uh, and it, it's it's got um, a, a lot of uh, uh, advanced analytics in it and deep learning in it. The deep learning uh, um, function has an autoencoder. Uh, ability um, or, or option, uh, and, and this is kind of the architecture uh, that, that we use. The user would typically see um, uh, Spotfire as the interface on, on the desktop uh, or, or a cloud implementation or using the web player. Uh, it communicates directly to the uh, TIPCO Enterprise Runtime for R, which, are, which uh, Michael talked about uh, to some degree, and that talks to the um, uh, the package, uh, of course, you know, a lot of the power of R is in uh, the wide variety of packages that are available, and those, of course, are uh, ac accessible and usable by uh, use of our data functions uh, within Spotfire. So uh, one of the nice things about H2O, uh, the package will, will run uh, uh, on a server, uh, on your desktop, or even on a Hadoop cluster. Uh, it can be configured to run uh, on, on rather large data. Uh, so uh, here's part of the interface that we developed, uh, which is just a, a way of uh, specifying, uh, you know, how many hidden, hidden units you want uh, in, in each layer um, and, and some of the other um, uh, parameters uh, that go into training a deep autoencoder. Uh, there's there's a lot of parameters uh, that are available, but we were able to pick out a few that uh, make it easy easy for the user to to just do this from a, a Spotfire uh, interface. Um, the uh, he, here's another example that shows, uh, as I mentioned, multiple hidden layers, uh, which enables uh, enables the uh, recognition of um, uh, more complex features. Uh, to, to be used in the autoencoder, uh, and, and this interface actually uh, accommodates that. You can just list uh, 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 several hidden units, uh, hidden layers separated with commas, uh, and, and go ahead and um, um, tell, tell H2O uh, to create a, a, a more complex autoencoder. Uh, so this is an example of, of the output uh, from the autoencoder, and, and, and basically uh, it's, it's a histogram showing uh, how well um, the autoencoder is able to duplicate the input. So the way I often think of this is, uh, you know, if you compress a photograph uh, and, and restore it, most of it looks good, but some of it is fuzzy. And what we're interested in really is the fuzzy part where, where the reconstruction uh, error is, is large, or you can think of that as an index of uh, how anomalous uh, those points are. So here we see uh, uh, most, of the, most of the points are uh, uh, up, you know, on the left-hand side with a very small error. So you can think of those as being typical. And that as the, uh, the error index increases, uh, you have fewer and fewer cases. Uh, and so what you end up is with uh, kind of a long tail. Uh, and then uh, a typical thing that happens is that you, you get a, a bump where, where you get into 
uh, not just uh, a long tail distribution, but but really things that are uh, anomalous, and and there are maybe a, a little bit more of them showing up, and, and those are the ones that we're we're interested in understanding better. So uh, Spotfire, of course, lets you drill down and and take a look at uh, what variables and what values are um, uh, associated with those out marking those points in Spotfire. You, you have it configured in such a way that you, you drill down and get this detailed information. Uh, and, and that get, guides you to tell you what's going on. Uh, here's another view of, of the same data. Uh, again, here it's a time series view. Uh, and the reconstruction error is on the, uh, on the vertical axis, on the Y axis. Uh, and you see on the left hand side, uh, you know, there are a few um, uh, you know, examples of the long tail, but uh, again, the ones uh, that we've that we've marked over on the right hand side, uh, Spotfire lets you uh, uh, code that uh, as a color, uh, and and you see it very clearly. Uh, in any case, that uh, uh, gradually you start to see these uh, log entries uh, that are not typical uh, of what happens when things are working properly. Uh, so uh, um, that gives you an opportunity to uh, take action and, and uh, start to solve the problem. Uh, so here, here's just another uh, example of uh, ways that you can um, display the different uh, types of warnings that you're getting, uh, picking, you know, uh, out of the maybe tens of thousands of different types of messages that you can get. You, you've got a good view of what the most important ones are um, uh, in these atypical cases or anomalies. Uh, another thing that we've experimented with uh, uh, is, is to use other machine learning techniques uh, as a second step. So this is an example of uh, taking that uh, reconstruction error uh, and then running a supervised version uh, uh, of, of the analysis. Uh, so now you have a, a, another way of computing this this index uh, and and recognizing uh, the upper right hand corner where where you've got a, a high uh, index uh, of uh, an anomalous situation. Now why would we do that? Well, uh, although you can get this directly from uh, from the neural network, uh, it's actually uh, a lot more efficient uh, uh, to use the, this uh, uh, gradient boosting machine or GBM uh, to get this uh, type of um, variable importance plot. Uh, and, um, you know, the, the, some of the other uh, advantages are that uh, that, that can help uh, when, you, when you move this to our uh, streaming product uh, and use it for online uh, detection of, of these anomalies, the uh, the GBM function is a lot a lot faster, uh, so that can uh, that that can help speed up uh, the the ability to to monitor a uh, uh, huge um, uh, amounts of information coming in. So. Um, let me uh, go to just a, a, a little bit of a, a live demonstration. This is uh, an example of um, uh, a template where we used uh, we used this technique um, uh, of, of unsupervised learning, even though we knew what what the uh, the target was. This is a fraud um, application uh, using uh, healthcare data. And, and we, uh, we actually knew that the, um, uh, which ones uh, eventually turned, turned out to be fraud, but we didn't use that information uh, in, in the autoencoder. Uh, so uh, what we see here, um, we can take a look at um, um, the, um, uh, again, th th these are two histograms. So this this top histogram, uh, you know, we've we've cut off the top, uh, but um, uh, you know, so we have a lot of um, cases with a low uh, error rate, um, uh, but the the um, the coloring in in, in the uh, lower part uh, shows that uh, the the small number of um, 
uh, of cases that were uh, that had a very large uh, reconstruction error uh, had a, a very high um, percentage of uh, actual frauds. Uh, so, so we see, you know, in, in the case of the low reconstruction error, uh, there were hardly any any frauds, and uh, we we considered this a, a very good validation of the technique uh, because we were able to. Uh, find this with uh, un, unsupervised uh, learning um, uh, and, and still, uh, you know, match up the, uh, the later information about what was actually uh, available. So these, uh, we, we have uh, this, this uh, specific uh, uh, version of the autoencoder is available for download. Uh, I'll show you how, how to do that in a moment. That's on the uh, community site. Uh, and uh, it has uh, complete uh, instructions on uh, how to install the packages that are required. Uh, it enables you to import your own data uh, and uh, do some selection on it um, and, uh, you know, use, use this type of interface to um, um, You know, to to send parameters to to the H two O anomaly detector, uh, and and then to take a look at uh, the, the the results. Um, uh, and again, here we see uh, the, the a histogram, uh, and uh, as you mark the histogram, see. Uh, 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 I'm you. Uh, and you can see uh, that these these problems seem to come in waves uh, on, a, on a periodic basis. Um, so let me just quickly show the uh, community site. This is uh, community.tibco.com. Uh, uh, I think there's going to be some more uh, demonstrations of it in, in detail, but uh, just to show you where you can find this uh, anomaly detector as well as other ones, you go to the exchange um, and uh, you have a, a large list. You can uh, filter and search, search, search the list. And uh, here is the anomaly detector. Uh, so you can just select whichever one you're interested in. And um, you go to the releases. Uh, menu and you can download it and uh, it's ready to install.